Lagomar, one of the best, coolest neighborhoods in Virginia Beach. That's what we're talking about today, and we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone, and I'm a real estate agent in Hampton Roads, Virginia. And if it's your first time, welcome here. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification too, and then you'll get notified every time I do a video. I do them about real estate, Hampton Roads, Hampton Roads and real estate. Uh, and today we're talking about Lagomar, one of my favorite neighborhoods of Virginia Beach. It's a real cool neighborhood, one of the most desired and sought out neighborhoods in Virginia Beach. And it's located in a tucked away corner of the area close to the beach. We'll get into like, where is it? I'll show you on the map and go into some details. What's there to do? What's it like living in Lagomar as well as history? I love going into the history. And we'll talk more about the houses and I'll drive through and do some real estate tours for you through the streets and we'll do some shopping information the school districts and something very specific I want to tell you about the school districts that is very important to know if you're looking to move here and some cons because there's cons to living everywhere right even though there's great reasons to be somewhere sometimes there's some drawbacks too so we'll get into a little bit of that well where is it well I'll show you on the map. Let's go back to that map. So on the southeastern side of Virginia Beach, um, you'll see that there's the, there's the beach, the ocean front goes all the way down that, that east side there. Well, tucked away in the right, uh, the southeastern corner uh, is Ocean Lakes. That's where the Ocean Lakes School District is. I did a video about Ocean Lakes School District. Uh, but just below the Ocean Lakes School is this little uh, neighborhood tucked away in the corner called Lagomore. It's near uh, some new developments that's, that are closer to the rest of Virginia Beach. It's still a little bit country in the midst of plenty of access to uh, other parts of town. For instance, it's about 15 minutes to the ocean front. It's also about 25 or so minutes to town center, which is the downtown uh, portion of Virginia Beach. And it's about 15 to 20 minutes away from uh, the closest mall, which is Lynn Haven Mall. And if you work at Oceana, uh, you're only about 10 to 15 minutes away from uh, there to Langamore. Now, if you want to go to Norfolk Navy Base on the northwestern side of Norfolk, that's closer to 35 or so minutes. These are all on, if there's no traffic at all. So if you add some traffic to this, you know, the driving to Norfolk can take, you know, a good bit of 45 minutes plus uh, if there's traffic, especially during rush hour. But you see, it's it's very close to a couple roads. Sandbridge Road, which is the road that connects you to Sandbridge, which is the kind of the southeastern beach uh, that is, it's quieter. A lot of the locals like Sandbridge. And you're just south of General Booth Boulevard, which gives you lots of connection to other parts of Virginia Beach. I will say one of the cons to living here is that it takes like 15 to 20 minutes to get to the closest interstate. So you're in the country, kind of, not really, but you're also close to the beach. You're also close to um, more action in Virginia Beach, but if you want to get to like Virginia, for instance, Norfolk and other parts of the South Side or the peninsula, even just getting to the interstate can take some time. The history about Lagomar, think about the word Lagomar. Well, Lagomar means lake and ocean. So the original founder and the purchaser of the land and the developer of this area, John Aragona, named it Lagomar because it's close to several lakes and close to the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. So this guy, he bought 800 acres of land in this whole area. Uh, he also developed other uh, neighborhoods in Virginia Beach, one of which was Aragona, which on the west northwestern side of the city is named after him. Well, he, he bought this 800 acres of land, developed it out. Now this land has been around for a while. Well, it's been around for a long time, but it's been inhabited for a long time. There is a little grave site just off what's called the Nemo Trail, and I'll show you here. It's a little grave site uh, for these Stone Brothers. They were here in the late 1700s and they passed away in the 1800s. And another name for this neighborhood is that it's the gateway to Virginia's Outer Banks. So going back to the map, if you look on the eastern side of the coast, you'll see Sandbridge. Going down further south, eventually you'll hit the Outer Banks. You see those Outer Banks down there and down into North Carolina. Now another interesting thing about this neighborhood is that all the streets are Spanish names. One like Las Brisas, Camino Real, Entrada. These are all Spanish names but there's one street that's not Spanish. It's called Atwood Town. This street is named after the original name of Lagomar, this area. It used to be called Atwood Town and they kept the name for this street. So now what's it like living in this area? Well, like I said before, it's country, sort of. It's close to most of the suburbia and some but some shopping areas in Virginia Beach, but you're close to that country suburbs line. And so you have access to both and you have access to the beach and you're also close to a couple of golf courses, Hells Point and Heron Ridge. You're also close to Back Bay Natural Wildlife Refuge, which is another really popular uh, area to go. If you're an outdoorsy kind of person, this south, southeastern section of Virginia Beach has lots for you. Now the Lagomore neighborhood itself. Let's do some drive-throughs so you can see what these streets look like in these houses. 
First of all, I want to talk about there's two separate sections to Lagomar. The first one was built in the 1980s to about 2000-ish. Now, if you go down the street, you'll see on the other side of the Lagomar are more new construction, anywhere from that 2000-ish time period to current, where there's some, some recently built homes as well. The ones on the older section have more Spanish flair to them also. Now, these are a little bit smaller. Some of the smallest ones can go as low as about 2,500 square feet or so. They go up to 4, 4,500 in some places. Uh, and then if you go to the newer side, they start at around 3,000 square feet, but go up to you know 5, 5,500 square feet. Uh, and, and so you're gonna pay a little bit more often to get the newer construction. Uh, but in the, the older section, you're starting 500 to 800,000. Newer sections, 500 up to closer to a million. These are some big houses, like four, five, six bedrooms, uh, and they, but they also have some nice lot settings too. So lots of wooded areas. Um, they, they don't all have the same uh, style of lot. They don't all have the same floor plan either, which is another cool thing about this area is that the designs, the floor plans are so different. But in general, there are lots of, there are lots of open floor plans. There's often some distance between you and your neighbors, uh, but not too far to where you don't get to know your neighbors. <laughs> A lot of these houses will, you know, the, the lower price ones, five, 600,000, they often sell pretty quickly, like maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks. It's priced accordingly and shows very well, but some stay on the market a little bit longer depending on the price range, it all depends. Uh, but there is some demand for Lagomar, so if the house shows very well, it's priced accordingly, there's a good chance that it will sell pretty quickly, but some, some will sit, especially if you go into the higher price ranges, because that's just kind of how the market in those ranges are. So you kind of just have to be ready if you do want to live in Lagomar, just in case you find the one that you love that's perfect, you kind of want to be ready to make a move on it just in case. And these houses too, you have the access to the trail. So one thing I want to mention is this Nemo trail. When you walk from your house, you can get to this trail. That trail takes you straight over to Red Mill Commons, which has Walmart, it has uh, Target, it has uh, lots of other shopping, grocery stores, Harris Teeter, because that trail from the southeastern corner of Langamar up to where Red Mill Commons is, is about two miles. So you could walk it, you could bike it, but it's super convenient because a lot of times walking from uh, neighborhoods to grocery areas or shopping areas is not too convenient. So having a place like a vibe like Lagomar and also having walkable access to shopping is pretty convenient and not too common to find uh, for a neighborhood like that. Now you may have heard me talk about flooding closer to Pungo on the southeastern side of Virginia Beach. Well, uh, the question about flooding, does this area require flood insurance? And the answer is mostly no. Uh, on the far eastern side of Lagomar, if you see like where I mentioned Atwood Town, just to the east of Atwood Town, there is a little strip that begins where some of the flood zones uh, are located, the high risk flood zones. Uh, but most of the rest of the neighborhood, I'd say like 95% of it is not in a high risk flood zone, uh, except for those couple spots. Now school districts for Lagomar. So elementary school is Red Mill Elementary. The uh, middle school is Princess Anne Middle School. And then the high school is actually high schools. There are two. Ocean Lakes High School and Kellum High School. Why are there two? Well, the older section of Lagomar has Kellum as its school district, but the newer section has Ocean Lakes. The reason I want to mention that also is because if you do find you're interested in Lagomar, but you're also interested in a specific school district, be very careful as to which section you're looking at. Essentially, that Nemo Trail is the divider between the north and south sections of Lagomar, which are the Ocean Lakes on the north and Kellum on the south. Now shopping. Well, again, the closest area is Red Mill Commons, which is about two miles away, but it's you can walk it, bike it, or you can drive it. It's pretty quick. Uh, but then on top of that, uh, Lynn Haven Mall is like 15 minutes away. I mentioned the Trader Joe's is about 20 or so minutes away, as well as Whole Foods. You have Lidl, the German uh, grocery store that's about five-ish minutes away, as well as Harris Teeter, We've got Target and Super Walmart. Most of that is in the Red Mill Commons area. Now going through the cons to me, here's what I would say the things I would be aware of if you do choose to move into this area. One is, like I said earlier, the drive to other places and the concern of there's sometimes there were some friends that you might have, if they're too far away, might not want to drive all the way to your house. House. That could be a reality. Number two is uh, you're close to areas that flood even though you're not in an area that is in a, in a high risk flood zone. Meaning Sandbridge and the sections around it have been known to flood some. Um, it does not seem to be a common problem anywhere close to this neighborhood itself. Just know that south, southeast of this uh, area has had some problems uh, recently. This area is not in an area that is in a high noise zone either. So the jet noise that you might hear about in some places of Virginia Beach does not normally uh, find its way in this neighborhood specifically, but it's very close to high uh, noise zones. So I'm going to attach on the description here the, the noise zone map 
uh, of the entire area so you can see where the highest risk or highest noise zones are. The con here is not the fact that you're not in the noise zones, it's more that the areas that you might drive to and live in more frequently if you're not at your house could easily be in those high uh, noise zones. And I'll say too, if, if it is a con, it is kind of expensive. I mean, it depends on what your uh, budget is, but it can get up there. Like I said, it starts at 500,000 to start with and goes up to a million. So there are a lot of things that Lagomar offers for that amount, but it doesn't change the fact that it is still expensive. So if you do want to find something more affordable, there are other neighborhoods that are a lot cheaper that could serve the needs that you have, but this area is pretty cool anyway. <laughs> and I'll see you on the next video.